So if I take you right back to your childhood, when when was it you you realised or did somebody else realise that you had this tremendous talent? How did I realise it? Or did somebody else point it out to you? Oh, well, in fact, I probably saw stuff that my father was doing, some drawings. In fact, I've got one here of my mother. This is the only drawing I've ever seen that my father ever did. And somehow it's been banging around and um, suddenly I've obviously framed it up, lost it a few times. And, um, and this is a drawing of my mum. And I think he was a frustrated artist and I felt he, he couldn't do it, so he, drew, he drove me to do it. Which is quite extraordinary because um, the idea is to get yourself into art school. But a lot of parents wouldn't let you go to art school because you thought you were going to be into all the uh, naughty game, you know. You know, drugs and rock and roll and whatever. So, so therefore a lot, a lot of parents said, you're not going to earn any money doing art, so you're not going. But my father drove me straight down there. He said, you're going and supported me through the whole thing. And my um, mum as well. And when, when did that start? Um, that started at Saturday morning art school um, when I was 10 years old at Kingston Art School. Saturday mornings, that was exciting, meeting very interesting people and going into a completely different world I'd never seen in my life before from where I was, where I came from. And that led us probably, I don't know, when it took four or five years of Saturday mornings and then we landed up at Epsom Art School on a foundation year. Um, and then because we didn't have our GCEs, we had to get out of there. And then we landed up at Guildford Art School for three years. And then a postgrad at Farnham. So where did Nothing where to do with illustration, just... No. Yeah, it's so interesting. Maybe. And the interesting thing is that um, the best illustrators come from fine art, not graphics. The best painters come from fine art, whatever. And it's fact. So where did you grow up and where were your influences? Was it in the country? Um, who, who actually did, did anybody influence you as a teenager? Um, Artistically and musically. What are you talking about the time I met Terence Cuneo? Okay, yes, tell me, tell me about that. Well, Terence Cuneo was the r really credible, famous artist. And he lived in East Molsey, where I lived. And he was the president of the Molsey Art Society. And I joined that. And then one day I saw him walking down the street near Hampton Court, Greek Street. And I, I was on my bike and I drew up beside him and I said, um, uh, good morning Mr Cuneo, um, I'm Melvin War no it wasn't War Melvin Smith then, and I said, is there any chance I'd come and see you? And I couldn't believe it when he said, you can come round on Sunday and have tea with my wife. I was probably about 14 and I turned up, sure enough, had tea with her wife and then he came in he said, do you want to come into my studio. And I go, I couldn't believe this. And in the entrance to his um, studio was um, a huge jailer's metal um, door, a jailer's door, which he brought back from the Middle East. And you went in there and you went into this other, another mind-blowing world with huge paintings of military tanks and battles and shot paintings of the Queen. Queen went there quite often and all the royals went there and they were on these huge um, winch easels. And um, I went I went probably two or three times. Actually. And were your parents aware of this? Well, they, <laughs> whether they were aware. <laughs> 
Uh, what do you mean by that? I mean, they, I don't know, they, they probably thought that was quite amazing, but I don't know, really. Well, it wasn't. It was for me. Mm. And then we carried a great relationship and Christmas cards and um, wonderful cards he wrote about my work. And eventually I bumped into him down at the New Forest show and I walked into his car and he said, could you tell me which pills I should take to keep me awake? Because he, he, had, he had these handmade Bristol cards and I sorted his pills out and um, he thanked me for that and he drove off and... Um, and then he, landed, he lived till he was 93 and died in a home in Isha. Mm. 